Hi everyone and welcome back! Today I have a really fun video, I will be using dies to create my very own art journals or notebooks and I will also create two pages for one of them. So let's get started. First of all for today I will be working with uh, the dies by Art by Marlene. These are um, a set of dies that allow you to create both the cover as well as cut out the pages and they also give you a bunch of other decorative elements that you can cut out and stick inside your pages or on the cover. So this is the main die that cuts out the cover along with a little flap and this is the die that cuts out the pages. And you get other dies such as hearts, stars, borders, labels, a bunch of different decorative elements. Now the idea is to cut out the cover and then create as many pages as you like and you put your book together with an elastic. I will create two of those books today just to show you that you can uh, create so many different styles and I'm going for both a vintage looking one as well as a bright and happy one. The fun fact about creating your own journal is that you can use the paper that you love. For example here I'm using heavy watercolor paper and I'm going to use that to die cut the cover as well as all the pages inside. So one of my art journal books is going to be like that. Now this die is quite big and I have the big Gemini and uh, it fits nicely on the platform but I'm going to bring in the regular platforms. This is a Spellbinders and a Sizzix one so that you can see depending on what you have. You can see that on the width it fits nicely but it is slightly longer. That's not a problem. Just stick the page on the die, run it once and then shift it a little bit and run it one more time. So it pretty much fits any standard machine that has a 6 uh, inches wide platform. Heavy watercolor paper gives me the option to use any paint that I like on top to decorate my cover. And as you cut out this die, it also gives you the scoring lines, as well as the two holes where you can thread through the elastic. And this is going to be the cover of my first book. And then let's make another one. This time I'm going to use pattern paper. This way I will have a nice and sturdy cover, but at the same time I will end up having the decoration instantly. Again I used my bone folder to reinforce the scoring lines. And I have my book ready to go. You can use the flap on the inside or on the outside. It really depends on how you want to work with it. And I'm going to put those aside and I will work on decorative the blank one. Now, of course, you can go with your acrylic paints, with your watercolors, you can stamp on top of it, anything goes really. I decided to use some, uh, I decided to go with collage paper and I'm going through this Art by Marlene book just to find something that strikes my eye. I used the die to cut out one more cover out of uh, my tissue paper and this is really thin, so now I'm using uh, matte medium to stick one on top of the other. An easier way would be to stick tissue paper on top of a uh, watercolor paper and use the die to cut out the cover afterwards when those two are uh, nicely stuck together because you can see here I'm struggling to make sure that everything is nicely aligned. But in the end it worked just fine. I'm making sure that I cover up completely the whole area with matte medium so I have a good bonding there. And here is my finished cover. The little flap can face any way you like it. It can go on the inside or on the outside or you can even cut it out completely. So many different looks that you can go with. This is the die that you can use to cut out the pages that fit inside the book. These are slightly smaller so you can have things sticking out of the pages and they will still be nicely content inside the cover. Now I have used this die to cut out pages out of paper. You can use any type of paper, thick or thin. It can be pattern paper and I have some pages here. I just used um, a paper pad that I had for ages, probably five or six years old. And it is a great way to use up little scraps and bits and pieces that you have in your stash. You can also turn it into a junk journal. So with this die you can turn easily anything you like into a page. Now if you notice here I'm alternating a white page with a scrapbook page just for some variation and of course this is a custom made notebook so you can add as many pages as you like. I'm going to stop here I think it looks nice as it is 
And before I put my book together, I'm going to add a little label at the front just for the fun of it, to decorate it just a little bit more. I have this metallic label that I am going to poke a couple of holes and I will secure this label with a couple of brads. And now if you want, you can cover up the back if you don't want to see the legs of the brads or leave them as they are. I'm going to cover them up just to show you that it is really easy. Just cut out one more page out of pattern paper and chop off just one part of it. Now this is going to turn your flaps into being even sturdier than they are. And it's going to cover up completely any mess that you have at the back. And here you can see I went with a tie that cuts out the pages, which means that it's going to be slightly smaller than the cover and it's going to leave a nice border. If you don't want to have that border, just use the other die that cuts out the cover. So you will have a back which is exactly the same as the front. Now to put your book together, all you have to do is to use some elastic. I do have a red elastic here, which I'm going to use. Just thread it through the two holes and tie a double knot. The elastic shouldn't be very tight to the book since you want to make sure that you are able to put through the pages or take them off whenever you want to. I'm going to chop off the excess of my elastic and then I'm going to thread through the bunch of pages that I have. It's really easy to put together. You can make notebooks like this one. You can also create swatch books to swatch your colors or even make an art journal, which I'm going to do next. And of course you can work even more on this little uh, notebook. You can uh, make it uh, distress a little bit more by adding some uh, distress oxide ink all around the edges. You can even distress the pages and turn them into looking more old and vintage. I'm even doing some stamping here. It really depends on what you want to do. To put together your book, just wrap around a ribbon or an elastic or even um, tie a knot with a thread just like I did here. And my first vintage looking book is ready. I'm going to use that as a notebook, maybe sketch ideas or write down motivational quotes that I like to turn into pages. And now let's make something fun and colorful. This time I'm going for an art journal book and I will also share a couple of pages that I did once I finished it. I have a bunch of pages here and I can always add even more as I go. This is Arteza thick watercolor paper. You will find it linked down below. It's great for mixed media. Now for this tag journal uh, set that I used in a previous video, remember when I did this tag journal a few weeks ago, there was a little embellishment, a flower embellishment that I'm going to use in this project today. So I'm going to thread it through my red elastic then wrap the elastic around my book and tie a double knot to keep my pages together. And now, just for the fun of it, let's play on those four pages and create a few layouts. I'm going to take them all out and I'm going to put them inside a box where I can do some spraying. For today, I am using my dilution sprays just because you can use them to create really quickly gorgeous backgrounds. These are nice and vibrant and I'm combining mainly yellows with greens as well as pinks with oranges and yellows. Once I finish spraying the front page, I'm going to turn it around and do the same thing on the back. I will take out uh, from the box this page and put it aside to dry and then I will work on another page until I have all the pages ready to go. I'm going to put on some music and let you see how I spread some of them and I'll catch you back once everything is dry. So after spraying all the pages front and back, now they are nice and dry, I'm going to put them back in the box, two at a time, and I'm going to place on top one of the new stencils by Art by Marlene. I'm going to spray on top with one of the same colors, just to create a more interesting background. Again I'm going to work front and back on the pages, 
And you can either spray with ink again, place the stencil upside down so that it can soak any leftover ink from the previous spraying. You can even use a baby wipe like I did here for a ghost effect, spray with water, so many different ways you can play around with stencils. All the stencils that I'm using today are by Art by Marlene from the new collection. I am linking everything I used and the new collection by Art by Marlene is now available in Joggles. They did stock up on uh, pretty much everything. If you like something, make sure to move fast because Art by Marlene products really sell out super quickly. And here are all my pages ready to go. I'm going to alternate them yellows, pinks, yellows, pinks and uh, I have some pages as a start for my book and so here is how it looks at the moment now just for the fun of it and because I was super excited once I made it I wanted to create a couple of pages which I'm going to share with you today and if you want to see even more of those pages Make sure to let me know in the comments down below so I can turn on the camera while I'm working on them. Now first of all I'm going to do some stamping on my page and I have here a stamp set by Art by Marlene. Now this is probably her most uh, popular stamp set because it includes all those bits and pieces. These are all doodling stamps that you can use for backgrounds. I'm going to use one with a, a row of hearts to create a little background all around. I'm stamping that with black archival ink. And you can see I placed all those little uh, stamps inside the tin box. I absolutely love this way of storage. It allows me to browse through them easily and pick the one that I want to work with. And with this stamp set you have a huge collection of doodles that you can work with. You can add visual texture on your background. I like to stamp them usually with similar colors than the ones with the ones that I have on my background, just for a more subtle look, which is exactly what I'm going to do now with those circles. But of course you can go more bold and use black if you like. In the new collection by Art by Marlene, there are a couple of uh, die cut pads and I did use them in previous videos as well. Today I decided to go with this one just because I find it really cute. Plus the colors on it are going to have a nice contrast with my green and bluish background. I am going all around it with a black marker just to make sure that I don't have that white edge and then I'm going to stick it down by using my Nouveau Deluxe glue. Of course you can use your matte medium or any other glue that you have. I am also going to bring in my white gel pen. I'm going to color in all those little hearts that I stamped on the borders. And for some reason on this project today I forgot to do my white splashes. And I just realized it now that I'm doing the video editing. I'm also going to add some highlights here and there on the die cut, just like I always do. Now I think that this being so weird is going to match perfectly with one of the sayings. This is a pad by Art by Marlene again with lots and lots of quotes that you can use on art journal pages. And the one that I picked here says, if you are going to be weird, be confident about it. And I think it matches perfectly. I like to cut the quotes into smaller strips so that I can fit them on my page. This is where I decided that I wanted to play with my stencils and my texture paste. So I'm just going to add some dots here and there. And this is again a stencil from the latest collection. You will find everything I'm using linked below. And then just like always I will use a black marker and go all around them just to help them pop even more. This is going to be the finishing touch on my page. I'm going to leave it aside and uh, let that paste dry and I will work on another page. Now I'm going to work on this pink and orange page. Again I will work with the exact same techniques as I did for the first page. So this is going to look in the end as a very cohesive book. I'm working with one of the longest uh, stamps from the doodling set. 
and uh, I created kind of a border and now I'm going to add a few dots using a very similar color as the background. You probably can't tell that the dots are there, but trust me, if you look at it from close enough, they are there and they do add some visual texture. In this set of stamps, there is also this lovely little leaf, which I'm going to stamp here and there. I'm going to have some coming from the top and some at the bottom. And I went through my booklet with all those die cuts and I found this lovely lady that has a really contrasting color again with the background. So greens on pinks and oranges this time. Before I go ahead and stick her down, I will do some white uh, details here and there. So I am going to color in the leaves. I'm also going to add some white uh, all around the borders that I stamped. And just like I did on the previous page, I will use my black marker and go all around the edges, making sure that I don't have any white edge showing. Trust me, it really makes a difference. And what I love about those die-cut booklets by Art by Marlene is that they don't have a white border. And then again, I'm going to stick her down with using my Nouveau Deluxe glue at the back. Just because she is quite big for my page, I'm going to make sure that uh, she is hanging off a little bit. And of course, I can use my scissors and cut out the excess paper. And this video is already getting super big since I created a couple of journal books as well as a couple of pages. But I just wanted to share everything I made with you guys because I had so much fun playing with these dies and I will create many of them in the future. So here again I grabbed my quote booklet and I'm going through the pages. This booklet is fun because it come, all these quotes come in white, which is the one that I'm using for my pages today. They also come in craft color as well as in black color with white letters. So I decided to go with love more, fear less. I'm going to stick them down and draw the lines just like always. And of course, finally, I have to bring in my white gel pen and add some highlights on my die cut here and there. This is going to be the finishing touch. And now I can put all the pages back in my book so you can see how it looks at the moment. For this book, I decided to have the smaller flap coming on top of the cover. And as an extra fun element, I'm going to stick one of the stickers that says Craftomania which I'm going to stick on the side, so when the smaller flap is on top, it's going to cover it up. Again, I'm adding my black lines all around, and I can go on and on creating even more pages, but I have to stop here. And these were the projects for today, as I was playing with the new dies and uh, the new collection by Art by Marlene. I ended up having a vintage-looking notebook, as well as an art journal. I also created a couple of pages and I had lots and lots of fun. So I hope that you had fun too, that you got inspired. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.